Now, before we talk about uh, the yeah, maybe let us let us consider this. Now, one of the most famous uh, multi stage amplifiers and a classical uh, multi stage amplifier is the cascode amplifier. Now, so far we did not worry about the frequency response. This is because of the reason that in most of the applications the signals we are handling or let us say assuming we are taking the signal signal from a, a typical sensor, the signal frequency would be of the order of at the most let us say a, a, a kilohertz, most of the time much much less than that. So, therefore, the frequency response is not an issue. So, this is why we said in an op, in an op amp the when they designed it, they designed it for a much lower frequency. So, an op amp is not supposed to be used for frequencies above 1 kilohertz. So, next time when you are tempted to use an op amp be careful. This is because of the fact that it has a finite slew rate and that finite slew rate has to do with that compensation capacitor which is put inside we, which we talked about. Now, there are cases where you need high frequency response. Now, you can think of one such situation as a video amplifier. Now, in this particular uh, you are you are seeing me remotely because there is a camera looking at my face and that the signal of the camera is, is typically the order of 5 megahertz. So, when we talk about a signal a sensor signal the highest you would always get from a video signal, a video signal has the highest. Now, if you try to make a video amplifier and if you try to do it you would find that it is extremely difficult. Now, this is because of the reason that uh, the frequency response anything above a megahertz is very difficult especially if you try to build it around a discrete amplifier is extremely difficult. And from our discussion yesterday we said that the frequency response of a common emitter amplifier is quite small. So, coming back to the comparison we can add one more column we could add frequency response. Now, a common emitter amplifier has let us say low to medium. What we mean by low to medium is that typically a common emitter amplifier the high frequency cutoff would be somewhere of the order of say 1, 1 megahertz or so and most of the time you do not even get 1 megahertz typically 100 kilohertz 200 kilohertz that kind of order. So, that is what we mean by low to medium high frequency response. So, let us let's, let's put the word high frequency response. Now, common base amplifier which we talked about yesterday is very good from this point of view. Common base amplifier has very high frequency response. Now, the again if you build a discrete amplifier a common base amplifier can give you quite high frequency response definitely in the megahertz region. Now, a common collector amplifier also has high frequency response. Now, so we see immediately a case for cascading different stages. If you remember we said the basic philosophy which we follow in a multi stage amplifier is to bring in the advantages of different stages and uh, choose them and order them in such a way that you finally minimize the disadvantages and then you kind of cash on the advantages. So, let us think of a of a scenario the which we just now talked about where we said we talked about the cascode amplifier which is nothing but a which is a, a, a cascade of a common emitter stage followed by a common base stage. Now, this is a typical a diagram with biasing and so on. Now, what we have here you have the input coming here at this side. Now, the first stage is our familiar common emitter stage. Now, what we see here is the collector instead of a load here this is actually feeding to the emitter. 
Now, we know that in a common base amplifier, the input is between the emitter and base. Now, you can see here that the base terminal is grounded through a capacitor. So, for AC, the base terminal of the second transistor is at ground potential. At the same time, it is biased through this resistors. So, you have a uh, proper biasing at the same time for AC, the this is a common base. Now, what happens is because we have the advantage of the high frequency response, this cascade would give you the almost the same frequency response of a common base stage. At the same time, it would give you the input resistance which is that of the common emitter stage. So, this is a very good classical example of <coughs> taking advantage of the stages and ordering them in such a way that you get the best things. So, here the common emitter common base is poor from its point of view of uh, very low input resistance, whereas a common emitter has let us say kind of medium input resistance. So, the first stage is a common emitter. So, this particular cascode amplifier would give you a quite high high frequency response and is very commonly used. So, if you think about ever a discrete high frequency amplifier, you need to use a cascode stage. Now, the output is again taken from the output of the common base stage. Now, the voltage gain of this combination would be the same as the voltage gain of a single stage. Now, the because of the <coughs> cascade between the common emitter and the common base, if you split this as two separate amplifiers, you would see that the effective voltage gain of the first stage which is the common emitter stage is unity. Now, we know that we had a disadvantage uh, in terms of the high frequency response in a common emitter amplifier because of the Miller effect. And the Miller effect came into picture because of the emitter uh, rather the collector and the base terminal of a common emitter being having a high negative gain. And we said that amounts to a multiplying the capacitor between the C mu capacitor by the voltage gain and that gave us what was called the Miller effect and that reduced. In this particular case, the voltage gain of the common emitter would be just unity and that, that therefore, the multiplication of that C mu which we talked about does not happen. So, this is how a cascode amplifier gives you the same voltage almost the same voltage gain as a single stage the same time much higher uh, high frequency response. Now, there are also very popular cascode amplifier in IC form. One such form, there is a very popular IC which has inside just three transistors. Now, this is typically how a, a CA3028 would look like. Now, it has a few resistors also put there, but primarily the way it is connected here, you could use this particular IC in a variety of application. You could use it as a differential amplifier, in which case you could design a particular current for this, you, you can by, by putting external resistors you could design as a, a particular current here and you could operate it as a differential amplifier by putting external resistors. Now, another very common use of this particular one is its use as a cascode amplifier. Now, these ICs here are rather these transistors here are uh, chosen to have quite high high frequency response. So, you could design the first this particular transistor the first transistor which can be designed as a C amplifier by putting external components outside. And uh, you could 
design the second transistor as a CB, a common base again by appropriately biasing here and you would get a, a fairly high you know uh, I mean you can let us say not quite a discrete amplifier, but you have a like a hybrid situation where you could have a mix of IC the advantage of, of an IC fabrication fabricated amp, uh, transistors matched transistors extremely high quality transistors and our own design. So, this is also a very popular uh, there are a quite a, a few number of these uh, type of ICs which are available for this type of applications. Uh, maybe I could just talk about just one or two cases of let us say again cascades. Uh, let me before I come to, come to that. Now, let us think, think about one or two cascades. Now, we know that the common emitter amplifier we know has let us say low to medium input resistance. Now, if you want to jack it up, if you want to jack up otherwise common emitter amplifier is a fairly good one. Now, if you want to jack up the input resistance, one easy way of doing that is to cascade it with a common collector. So, if you have a common collector at its input then we can get high input resistance. Now, in case we want to have let us say in an application what we are interested in is to get lower output resistance, then we can think of a CECC. Now, so there are many such combinations we can do. Now, interestingly we can also think of other combinations one such combination is a C S C E. We know that in a common collector even though a common collector common emitter cascade would give us let us say fairly high input resistance, the input resistance is still not that high. Let us say that you are happy with a common emitter amplifier except for its input resistance and you are looking at an input resistance of say 1 mega in which case you have to either go for a Darlington emitter follower at the input or there is another solution. You could use a common source amplifier. Now, Professor Mahesh Patil has, has taught you JFET. Now, these days JFETs are not uh, commonly used, but you may be having some of these experiments in your colleges. Now, JFET is an extremely good device. In fact, JFET is, is the best device in terms of low noise. It is an extremely low noise device. Now, a JFET as we know has extremely high input resistance. You could have easily 1 mega ohm, uh, input resistance of 1, one mega ohm easily. So, if you cascade a common source and a common emitter, you could get a a cascade. In fact, you can, you can even have uh, uh, because of the common uh, source amplifier, you can get some slight gain also out of the JFET amplifier. But as you might know, a JFET amplifier because of the low transconductance, uh, JFET and MOSFET amplifiers cannot give much gain. So, that way a BJT can give you much higher gain. Now, I thought I will spend maybe another 5 or 10 minutes on uh, what could be kind of a methodology or some suggestions for teaching uh, analog electronics. Now, in my teaching experience for the last uh, about 19 years, it has always been a challenge to teach analog electronics, it has always been a challenge. Now, in a typical course which we have in all IITs in the first year or the second year called introduction to electronics or electronic circuits and instrumentation. The biggest challenge is to keep the students interested. So, 
I have a few suggestions. Now, when we come to analog electronics, now we, from my experience, I always found that students generally find digital electronics much simpler. In fact, uh, when students come for interviews, M Tech interviews, if we ask them what question should be ask you, the answer is almost always, sir, ask something digital, do not ask analog. Now, analog electronics, teaching analog electronics is always a challenge. Now, at the same time, there is a big debate today, should we teach transistors, should we teach discrete circuits anymore, because most of the time when you talk about an application, you might have already noticed that there are lots of disadvantages when we talk about a discrete amplifier. So, why should we teach discrete amplifiers? Now, the major reason is discrete circuits or let us say discrete amplifiers. are the best in terms of teaching concepts. Now, uh, today afternoon you have a BJT amplifier, common emitter amplifier. Now, I do hope that all of you get the circuit working, but uh, I am sure at least 50 percent of you would have difficulty. The reason being analog electronics unless you design everything properly, unless you connect everything properly, unless everything is correct, things do not work. And finally, if things do not work, how do you interpret? So, discrete amplifiers, let us say a simple amplifier like a common emitter amplifier is one of the best to teach concepts. The concept of a signal, the concept of amplification, the concept of non-linearity, the concept of uh, overload, all these things are very, very easily taught through simple discrete circuits. So, we could think of the study of discrete circuits or discrete amplifiers or in fact, multi stage amplifiers. In fact, multi stage amplifiers today you would never ever find uh, discrete circuits being used for multi stage amplifiers. You would almost always have a simple IC which would be much cheaper than all the discrete components you put in a multi stage amplifier. But the advantage of building a small circuit is that lot of concepts are taught. Now, I strongly encourage uh, all of you as uh, my fellow colleagues as teachers to encourage your students to get enthused with experiments. Now, unfortunately, in our country, if there is one decay, let us say in technical education, this is the area of uh, decay. There is hardly any experimentation in the labs. Now, to do an experiment on a common emitter amplifier, you do not need any sophisticated equipment. You only need a power supply, a breadboard or a micro board, a few components and an oscilloscope and a function generator. This is there in all engineering college, but in spite of that, when we ask students, even our own postgraduate students, a good number of them have not done any experiment any serious experiment. I believe this is a very bad scenario and uh, therefore, analog electronics uh, and especially discrete circuits, simple discrete circuits, I would strongly encourage uh, encouraging your own students to do this kind of experiments, so that they understand, they get a hands on experience uh, with hardware. Otherwise, today we do not need to teach much into uh, the uh, analog electronics. Now, in fact, uh, another trend which is there in the most of the western countries is that uh, today you would find if you go and buy a, a book, you would find that most of the books would have only a few pages on BJTs and you would find the discussion has entirely changed from BJTs to MOSFETs. Now, maybe in about 10 years from now, you may not have any, let us say, you may not get even BJTs, that is what people are predicting. But the, as you all would appreciate, it is extremely difficult to use a MOSFET and to do an experiment. So, that way, a JFET can be easily bought, 
and again to teach concepts on uh, FET based amplifiers we could use a JFET. Now, uh, you could give to your students one of the ways which I found which is very useful and uh, this is in the context of multi stage amplifiers and as I said in almost every in any practical application you would see that you cannot build that particular application using a single stage amplifier and uh, you could give extremely simple applications to your students just for the sake of learning so that they get enthused in analog electronics that we should remove this fear of analog electronics. Now, I can suggest maybe one or two simple very very simple things uh, for example, think about a kind of photometer something which do not worry about the accuracy of the photometer, but something which measures the light something which can tell you whether you know we know intuitively whether outside whether it is dark early morning we know just by the look of it we can say it is dark if it is cloudy we know it is cloudy. Now, you can have a simple a photometer built around a photo detector which is very cheap 5 rupees very very cheap and a few discrete components. Now, in let us think about the simple circuit I talked about for a, a simple photometer where do not worry about the calibration, but the interest is to see where at least it can show some relative changes in the voltages. Now, as we talked about yesterday a photo detector is essentially a current source. Now, so far in all our discussion in the multi stage amplifier we assumed it to be a voltage amplifier. Now, here is a situation where we need a, a current amplifier. Now, you may not be aware, but actually there are very very simple circuits which can actually convert current to voltage. One such circuit is an inverting amplifier. An inverting amplifier can easily convert the light into a voltage. Let us talk about a current to voltage conversion. Now, we know about the we have studied the inverting amplifier using an op amp. You could also use a common uh, base amplifier. We said that in a common base amplifier the input resistance is very small and we know from our discussion yesterday that if you have a current then the input stage should have extremely low input resistance. Now, you could think of you could think of a simple circuit like this where we have a photo detector here the light is falling on it whatever photo current and it is, is biased in a reverse mode by applying a positive voltage to the cathode there. Now, here the because of the negative feedback here this particular potential is at virtual ground which is 0. So, here we have an ideal current the in, so this is a current to voltage converter. So, we have this amplifier right, the, the circuit we have here is nothing but a trans resistance amplifier. So, we could think of such simple circuits which would which 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 can be used for uh, achieving for teaching analog electronics. So, I would come to the end of my lecture here just to have a quick recap of what we discussed. We talked about multi stage amplifiers and we said the the strategy in a multi stage amplifier is to decide on how many stages and uh, we said in a typical multi stage amplifier the first stage assuming it is a voltage amplifier need to have high voltage gain sorry uh, need to have high input resistance and the voltage gain need not be high. The second stage would have a high voltage gain and the final stage would have a low output resistance. 
and uh, we talked about examples like a public address system, we talked about the example of a op amp. So, in all these cases we see a multi stage amplifier and we said that in almost all practical application we cannot get the required amplifier specifications from a single stage. So, we will go to Kanchipuram where we will have an inter interaction. Yeah, over to you Kanchipuram. Thank you Professor John. Uh, I am in Kanchipuram and the audio video was very good. Uh, all the participants are very happy with the, your lectures and there are around uh, 45 participants and I will give the phone to, uh, I will give the mic to uh, HOD, maybe she can give uh, feedback on the course. Good morning sir, this is Dr. Malari from SRM University. Uh, this is the first time of uh, this virtual mode we our faculty are being given exposure and it, the, the, uh, during the inaugural we feel that uh, such an in, uh, uh, seminars of this kind or workshop of this kind is, is necessary in the modern scenario where we sit at our site and uh, listen to uh, uh, people who have put uh, uh, good uh, uh, experience academically. One such thing is we have been talking and uh, teaching for uh, decades together the semiconductor devices and the fundamentals. When we listen to the inaugural thing, the first session of that, we could see that how to put forth to the uh, students who have come from the plus two level, the how to visualize it and uh, what we have perceived this uh, this idea or the concept, how to uh, uh, transfer to them in a very um, in a very easy way of visualizing, so that as you said, uh, creating the interest towards learning the electronics is a fundamental thing that we our teachers are given the exposure and second thing is during the laboratory sessions or the experimental sessions it gives a way for the teachers to understand or answer the questions of why this uh, why I am not able to get the output because as you said the students are almost are not getting the output in the analog area why I, they have not uh, got the results for that the teachers they are getting an inside view of answering them uh, that is an uh, highlight of this course I could uh, feel. And the second thing is uh, the exposure towards the experimental wise uh, giving an exposure to the board, uh, CPLD boards are all will be of use to uh, for the first teachers to upgrade themselves. Um, that is a thing from my side as a listener and uh, um, first viewer uh, of this program. Over. Thank you, madam, for your feedback. Uh, I think it will be uh, extremely important for all of us as teachers to enthuse our students in doing experiments, and uh, especially uh, we need to encourage our students that uh, analog electronics is not something to be scared about, but uh, by doing experiments and uh, they need to interpret their results and find out why and that is what makes them better engineers. Uh, I think uh, the uh, topic like basic electronics, in fact when I teach electronics I tell students that almost everything which we teach can be done in the lab. So, that way the concepts can be easily learned and uh, assimilated if they do side by side some experiments and also try to understand and they also definitely must make mistakes only through mistakes we learn but they must know what mistake they made and that is where a teacher would be of great help in IITs when our students do the experiments the faculty also goes around and uh, when they say something is not working we explain to them why and uh, therefore I think experiments definitely is the key uh, otherwise it is just only theory then uh, then they do not seem to get interested. So, I think it is extremely important that we take a course like electronics uh, definitely a course like basic electronics or electronic circuits, digital electronics all experiment and uh, theory side by side over. We are going to Swamiya college now, yeah over to you ma'am. Hello professor John. Uh, I, I reached about 10 minutes ago and uh, I was sitting through the last uh, part of your lecture 
and uh, the reception is very clear audio video both very very clear and uh, the font size is also i think uh, quite uh, legible from the back where i was sitting uh, technically it all seems absolutely fine i haven't had a chance to talk to the participants yet but uh, i will definitely come back with a feedback i hope uh, over to you thanks mukta ma'am for the feedback uh, i think it will be useful to get the feedback of the participants so that we could uh, improve uh, maybe in future or even the current sessions.